You know, I've been thinking. I've got a lot in common with a certain Marvel superhero character, and I think you know the one I mean. Alright, well I'm not black, I don't know martial arts, I'm not part vampire, and I don't dress all in leather. But he and I do share one thing in common. I'm a daywalker. Hey guys, Lightane here, and today I'm going to be looking at a Marvel film that was long before the MCU started. I'm going to find out, is it worth your time? Blade came out in 1998, in a time where superhero films and the like from comic books weren't all that popular on the big screen. In 1989, Tim Burton made the first Batman film, which is dark, edgy, and really kickstarted the serious tone in a comic book film. But they started to become pretty silly with the infamous Batman and Robin, which came out the year before this film. No hope was really left with comic book heroes being more than children's films, until Blade hit the scene. This movie came out and was rated R in America. People claimed that Deadpool really opened up the comic book universe with his R-rated film and through him, people are now able to make more mature films. But it's often forgotten that Blade did it first. The story of Blade is pretty simple. Blade's mom was bitten by a vampire just before she gave birth, resulting in her dying but the baby being born special. He has all the strength of the vampires but none of their weaknesses. He possesses heightened reflexes and strength with fast regeneration, isn't allergic to garlic or the sun, which is why they call him a daywalker. The only real negative side effect is that he has the vampire bloodlust and it can sometimes make him crazy with hunger. Because his mother died at the hands of vampires, he vows to avenge her death and teams up with Whistler who trains him and supplies him with the weapons. Blade then goes on a vampire killing spree trying to take them all out in his own personal vendetta. A nurse named Karen gets caught up in the crossfire and Blade saves her and they team up for a bit. Blade has been hunting down a big vampire named Deacon Frost. Frost has been translating old texts to learn all about a prophecy in order to fulfill it and realizes he needs Blade's blood to do it. His goal is to become a blood god and rule the world! Generic bad guy stuff, you know how it is. Will he do it? Well, I don't want to spoil the ending for you. Blade is played by Wesley Snipes, which does a fantastic job portraying the character. The character is very intimidating, and this comes across with Wesley Snipes' real scowl and non-smiling face throughout the whole film. The costume design for him is great, where he looks practical and well protected, and it's very close to what he did wear in the comic books. The one bad thing about Wesley Snipes' performance, though, is the dialogue. Though, I guess that's not really his fault, it's just the script but man are there some bad lines in this film. There are a few scenes that are just hilarious to watch due to some pretty stupid plot holes. Near the start, Blade is harassing a cop to find out where Frost is. Fine, but he does this in the middle of the day, on the street, with dozens of witnesses, and no one cares or does a thing. Then he pulls out a gun to shoot him as he gets away, and people gasp like, ah! But how quickly they forget, because he puts the gun away and everyone just goes back to their day walking down the street. Another thing that really irks me about this film is that one of Blade's special abilities is that he is a day walker. A vampire that can go out in the daytime. But there are two times in the film where vampires do this as well. There is a speech Frost gives to one of the higher ups when he's just about to kill him, saying that, oh, you've never seen a sunrise before because he's a pure blood vampire, one that was born that way. But Frost watches the sunrise with him, he is clad in full leather and he wears a bike helmet with a visor down but that means you can watch a sunrise, albeit filtered. How come other vampires don't do this? Another time, Frost stands in the shade in the middle of the day, and the reason they give why he isn't bursting into flames is he put a lot of sunblock on. What? 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 How is this a special skill when you can just put a lot of sunblock on to get rid of one of your greatest weaknesses? It isn't even brought up in future films or characters because they know that this was dumb. To be honest, there are quite a few of these inconsistent scenes in this movie that either don't go anywhere or are just used for an excuse to have a cool scene. Even the way they kill vampires is inconsistent, which is evident with Quinn and the lack of death from Blade's attacks. However, the action in this film is great! The introduction to the movie and Blade is a great way to show the hero of the film. He kills so many vampires and does it with such style using many of his gadgets and weapons. All of this is done without any dialogue. In a lot of films, they introduce the characters and give them a lot of backstory before turning into the hero by the end of the film. The other good thing about this intro is there isn't any exposition. You were just thrown into this world and you have no idea what the rules are or who the people are or anything. You just see this crazy scene. The other trope of cinema is to tell people that a person is badass without really showing them doing anything badass. This opens with it and gives you the backstory to Blade nearly 20-25 minutes into the film. But for as badass as Blade is in the film, he has some goofy moments as well, like this. Even mouthing this 
when he's fighting the villain at the end of the film. In a way, I think that makes him much more interesting as a person to watch because of these moments. He isn't a terribly good superhero either. Quinn the vampire gets away at the beginning of the film because Blade lets him live, only for him to go to a hospital and attack and kill more people, and then Blade shows up going, yeah, I knew this was going to happen. If you knew this was going to happen, why didn't you kill him before? Later on, he uses the female lead as bait in order to lure in a vampire to find out where the bad guy is. And lastly, he shoots at Frost when he is holding a child, and then as he does so, he throws the child into the street, and Blade is legitimately conflicted should he go and save the child, or should he go after his arch nemesis? How is this a superhero if he's contemplating saving a child or not? But nearly 20 years later, I'm going to say that the original Blade is worth it. I know. The acting, however, isn't that great, but it does do enough in order to suck you in and get you into this movie. The goofy moments in the scenes don't make a whole lot of sense, but they are so fun in a so bad it's good kind of way. It is a film that you will watch and you will enjoy and you will laugh at how stupid these things can be. It also taught me a very valuable lesson, that you shouldn't try and ice skate uphill. Yes, that's right. Some motherfuckers are always trying to ice skate uphill. For some reason, this is the final line Blade delivers to the bad guy. This is the kill line, the kill quote. We've had such memorable kill quotes in the past like Hasta la vista baby or Say hello to my little friend. Why he says this, it doesn't even make any sense in the film. It, uh, it just adds to the fact that it's so stupid. But I still say watch it. Anyways guys, don't forget to like and subscribe. And uh, maybe tell me if you enjoyed Blade or not, because I know I did. But then again, I'm a sucker for really bad films, so maybe I'm not the best judge of character. Anyways, see you next time. Bye.